If you're frustrated with your social media game, then here's part two of my 25 answers to common social media questions. Let's get to it. What is the proper ratio between selling and entertaining on social media? Well, the short answer is always entertain more than sell. Gary V has this great metaphor. He says, jab, jab, right hook. So that's a boxing metaphor that basically means jab, jab, and then go in for the sales pitch only after you've done mostly entertaining. The reason why is nobody wants to hear you sell when they have no idea who you are. So first, entertain people, get them to like you, get them to care, and then go in for the pitch. All right, moving on to number 14. And this one, you guys, is a big one. And it is, how do I get more fans fast? And that's by appreciating the one fan that you already have and multiplying that fan into a small army. You can do that by actually treating that fan extra special. And you'll see how they are gonna start getting excited, they're gonna start feeling engaged, and they're gonna start spreading the word of mouth about you. You don't wanna just get masses of people running over to your Spotify to stream your song, and then have them not come back to you because they're not true authentic fans. So build that army of fans slowly, one fan at a time, and watch your army grow. Okay, question number 15. Should I use bots and services that can actually increase my numbers? The answer is absolutely not. This can totally ruin your social media. So think about it. If you're actually having these bots, maybe these third world countries that are like listening to your music for like, five or 10 seconds and then basically bailing out just to increase your numbers, then the algorithms are gonna think that, hey, you know, people in those countries are interested in listening to your music. It's gonna send it out to that. They're not gonna listen to it. And it's just gonna send your social media into the dumps. So do not use bots and fake streams and stream farms that can totally ruin your social media platform. Number 16, should I use all the tools that are available on social media? And the answer is absolutely. When social media comes out with new tools, they want you to use them. The algorithm is gonna favor the people that are using them because typically speaking, they're creating these tools to compete with other platforms and they want you to use these tools. So definitely make sure to embrace them, learn about them, experiment with them so that you can have better luck in maybe getting your content pushed out. Number 17, what if I'm shy and I wanna be anonymous? That's actually a really great question. There's people like Sia and Boy with Yuki that have certainly hid behind their personas. But generally speaking, social media is about being authentic and actually putting yourself out there and maybe even explaining to your audience that you're shy might be very endearing to them. It's showing your vulnerability, it's showing that you're human and that will make people care. Number 18, is it worth hiring a social media team? Well, let's make no mistake, the best social media platforms and YouTube channels all have teams behind them but it's not economical for your typical DIY artist. And the truth is you can really do this yourself. There's a lot of tools available to help you do this. And fans are going to see the true you, the true imperfect you, and they're gonna appreciate the fact that it's really you answering them and it's really you reaching out to them. And it's not just some sort of assistant you know, in the cloud somewhere, so to speak. So yes, definitely, if you have the money to do it, Sure, it would be great to have people doing a lot of this stuff for you, doing the editing and things of that nature. But if it's something that you can't afford, know that you can definitely do this on your own. Number 19, should I pay for advertising? Well, that's also a great question. Advertising can definitely amplify your message, but here's the thing, what message is it amplifying? In other words, if your brand is not yet together, what are you pushing out there? right? So in other words, what you want to do first is you want to develop your brand. You want to build up a little bit more organically. And then what I would do is I would take the content that shows a little bit of promise and simply boost that. You can do TikTok boosts. You can boost in Instagram. It's very, very easy to do. I would definitely start with that first. You can just do a little bit of money. You could do $5 a day for four days on maybe a particular 
post. Maybe you can do a little bit more of that if you have the budget to do it. And then eventually you can get into more sophisticated marketing using Facebook tools, using you know, Google advertising tools and so on and so forth. But definitely first start out developing your brand and then maybe you can go into boosts. Number 20, which one is better, consistency or quality? This one's a good one, you guys. I always say quality, but why can't you do both? Why can't you do quality content consistently? It doesn't take that much to grab your phone and make shorts or reels or TikToks these days. We talked about some of the strategies earlier, right? So why don't you do that? Just be really careful though, not to overextend your schedule because that is guaranteed for burnout and failure. All right, you guys, moving on to number 21 now, and this is a really good one. What are the metrics that music industry professionals look at? Well, typically speaking, it's millions of streams on Spotify, hundreds of thousands of TikTok and Instagram followers, and a viral hit, right, to prove that you can be successful. The only problem with this strategy is that there's no guaranteeing that there's gonna be more hits after that, right? We don't want one hit wonders. So there's actually a trend where A&R is starting to look for artists that maybe will have longer term careers where they can kind of find them and develop them, which basically means sometimes they're looking for that, that gem hidden within that stone, right? So it's not necessarily just you know, tons of streams, tons of actually followers and engagement. Sometimes it could just be back to the way it used to be, being the most amazing artist you can be with the most amazing songs. I bet you like hearing that. <laughs> Number 22, can I avoid being on social media altogether? No, you guys, look, I mean, in this day and age today, everybody's on social media and not being on it might send a message that something is wrong with you. So unfortunately, I don't think this is something that we can avoid. Number 23, what are some of the tools that support social media? Well, there's so many of them, but I'll give you the two that literally every DIY artist uses. Number one, Canva for, of course, doing your graphic arts. And number two, of course, CapCut for editing your video. If you guys want a list of many more DIY tools, check out my book, Music Marketing for DIY Musician. There's a whole resource guide at the back of the book. Number 24, how can I use AI to assist with my social media? Well, man, that is a loaded question because there's so many tools that can help you with social media. First of all, right now, I could be reading a script right over here and it would change my eyeballs to look at you. I'm not reading a script over here. I'm looking at you doing this from my heart, but you could do that. I mean, that could be a very, very useful tool. You can also use ChatGPT to actually write your bio. You can use ChatGPT to help you find keywords that you load into your YouTube videos for SEO research. You can actually use ChatGPT to find a list of blogs that you should submit your music to or radio stations that you submit your music to. It's really unbelievable. There's a whole bunch of AI tools out there. So definitely I would investigate and try to use as many as you possibly can. Number 25, how do I manage my mental health? Well, after this long list that I just gave you, that's a really, really good question, right? Particularly because a lot of times when you post, you're not gonna get the results you want. So you need to be forgiving to yourself and you have to understand that every post is an opportunity to learn and grow. So you are gonna make mistakes and you can't be afraid to actually make them. Another thing of course is to take regular breaks and to balance things out so that you're using your time effectively. And just, you know, keep in mind, I mean, this is a long game. It's not something you're gonna do that's automatically gonna explode, but consistency and continual learning is the key. If you wanna make sure that you're doing your social media correctly, be sure to check out this next video or go to my youtube.com slash Bobby Borg page and look for the video on social media scans. My name is Bobby Borg, helping musicians turn the art into a more successful business. Peace.